Welcome to Portland, Oregon. WCC this week, our game coming up at the top of the hour, Santa Clara taking on Portland. We're going inside the Child Center for WCC this week as we get everybody set for the week in the conference. My name is Ari Wolf alongside the coach Brad Holland. So glad that you're with us. Coach, it is crunch time. It's that time of year. Teams trying to get themselves in proper position to get a good seed for the conference tournament. Indeed, and take Santa Clara, for example. They're really trying to nail down that fourth seed. I do think that BYU is probably going to end up as the third because I think they'll get 10 wins and beat LMU at the end. And then for Portland, they want to stay out of that play playoff game, which is the 8-9 play-in game. They're eighth in the conference right now, so they're working hard to get out of that game. And Portland has gotten hot of late. They've won three of their last five. As you look at the conference standings, Santa Clara in a good position to secure that bye as long as they take care of business over the final two weeks of the regular season. And Santa Clara is a team that certainly will be a threat to some of the top teams in the conference tournament. They will. And I think a win today, Ari, they pretty much solidify the fourth seed because USD is probably going to go down against Gonzaga tonight. So this is a great opportunity for the Broncos to get that first round by. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape between these two programs. Clearly Santa Clara with a far better record, and they have one of the real impact players, not only in the conference, but in the country in Kevin Foster. Boy, what a great senior year he's having, and he is so very difficult to guard. I mean, that's the thing about Kevin Foster. You know, he can shoot the long ball. Um, he can, obviously, he's a good passer. He's averaging four assists a game this year. But also, he's got a great mid-range game. He can take the ball all the way to the rim and create problems for opposing defenses. So he's just a very difficult matchup, no matter who's the opponent. Well, for Kevin Foster and the Broncos today, the important is Portland. And they are a young team. It's senior day, but they only have one senior in Derek Rogers. Talk about some of the challenges of coaching a young team. Yeah, they've got freshmen that are playing much better than they were early in the season. But that's the thing, Ari. I mean, you've got to be patient. You've got to stay with the guys. And now as they mature, Coach Reveno is reaping the benefits of that. I mean, they've been playing really well as of late. As you know, they've won three out of their last five. They're averaging 12 points more a game into the scoring column, which really helps. So Portland's on an uptick right now in the way they're playing. Well, Coach Reveno has had his challenges this season, and he talked with me just a little while ago about coaching a young team. Coaching a young team is always exciting because it, it, there's so much optimism and energy and enthusiasm and actually more, even more funny moments, you know, as you sort of laugh at their, their missteps and whatnot. Um, uh, but it has its challenges, you know, and what's, what's happened lately with the leadership of Derek Rogers, our one senior who's really led this young group, is it's starting to come together. And you feel like they're not making those freshman mistakes as many times. You know, uh, the game the other night was a great example. We ended the game with three timeouts because I let the players work through things. They were able to finish offensive plays were earlier in the year as calling timeout and having to manage it more. Our thanks to Coach Reveno for spending some time with us. Now we're going to have a little history lesson as we're joined by a former member of the pilot program and Jared Stolen. Jared, this team could use you. They could use a little more offense from behind the three-point line. Talk about your experience and what it meant to you playing here for Portland. Oh, you know, Portland kind of became my home playing here. All the fans, you know, the coaches, my teammates. And, you know, just to wear, wear Portland on your chest and be part of the winning this class in school history, you know, in such a competitive, underrated conference, uh, you know, it just meant everything to me. Now, you made a lot of threes in your career, right? But you also shot accurately, which I love. Talk about how you perfected your jump shot. You know, as a kid, I studied uh, J.J. Redick. And I used to tape his games and watch his footwork. And I'd go out and practice his footwork till I got it down and thousands of shots, thousands of hours. And that's how I really became uh, the shooter I was. Jared, let's talk a little bit about what you've done since your basketball career at Portland ended. We know you played professional basketball for a year in Germany, but take us through what you've done since you left the University of Portland. Yeah, so I played uh, professionally in Germany, Pro A, for nine and a half months, which was an incredible experience. Uh, finished second in three-pointers made in that league, too, and uh, it was really awesome there. And this year I was going to play again. Uh, I was going to play in England, but I hurt my back, and so... Now I'm starting my own company and uh, seeing, seeing where that takes me. Tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, it's called HEART. It stands for Homeless Art. And uh, basically I go to homeless shelters and uh, get kids to draw designs for me, put them on shirts, sell those shirts, and give back profit to the shelters and homeless kids for 
food, clothes, uh, events, stuff like that. So he was not only a great player, everybody, but he's doing great things in the community. Jared, we appreciate you spending some time with us, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break on WCC this week, but don't forget, coming up at the top of the hour, the WCC Game of the Week, Santa Clara and Portland. We are going to step away for a moment. When we return, Chris McGee and David Miller will be in the studio in L.A. Welcome back to WCC This Week in Los Angeles. I'm Chris McGee alongside the coach, Dave Miller. Hello, coach. You ready to get after a little bit? I'm ready for some WCC highlights, Chris. Let's get you to the highlights from earlier this week, starting with Wednesday night. Santa Clara taking on the number three ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. Kelly Olenek, he's averaging 17.9 points per game, six rebounds per game. Here he is early. Olenek, the stock is rising. The jam. A seven-foot pickpocket. Love the elevation. Three minutes left in the half. Bulldogs up 23. Elias Harris, Mike Hart for the three. Got it. Love the dribble penetration. It created the three ball. I'm loving Hart. Second half, Bulldogs. They're up big. Olenek, he's good off the pick and roll to slam. Like Olenek with the Statue of Liberty finish, playing like a top 15 pick in the NBA draft. Bulldogs rolling. Gary Bell Jr. from deep. Gonzaga goes on to win 85-42. After the game, Mike Hart spoke about the potential of the Zags. What's the ceiling for this Bulldog team right now? You know, I think it's I think it's as far as we want to take it. Uh, I think we have all the talent in the world here, and we have, you know, a group of guys that love playing for each other. And so, um, you know, if we come out with the right approach every night, I think we have a good chance of beating anybody. Uh, just one game at a time. Understanding that every game is the most important game, the next one, one step at a time, and come out with the energy that we did tonight. We move on. BYU Cougars taking on St. Mary's in St. Mary's. Brandon Davies had 28 points, 7 rebounds the last time they played. Matthew Delavadova leading the WCC in assists. Carlino drives the lane, throws the alley-oop to Davies. Loves to get into the paint. Davies with big target hands. 3.30 left in the half. Down three, Matthew Della Vadova from deep. He hits the three, ties it at 20. Give it up, get it back, keep it simple. The Aussie with deep range. Under seven minutes left. Della Vadova, another three. St. Mary's up six. Two minutes left in regulation. BYU down four. Look at Brandon Davies, coach. Well, he puts it on the floor. He spins middle, and he just gets it off. Looks a little bit like Antoine Jameson. 24 seconds left in regulation. BYU down three. Tyler Haas drives the lane. Great defense. St. Mary's, they would be fouled. They'd make the free throws. St. Mary's goes on to win 64 to 57. San Diego at Portland. Thomas Vandermars, one of the most improved big men in the conference, and the Pilots hosting San Diego. Less than three minutes left in the game. Portland up one. Vandermars, he's going to get the offense rebound and put it back. Well, I like the way he attacks from the short corner, getting his Earl Clark on, Lakers style. Ensuing possession, Simi, Fujimason. Easy layup underneath, cuts the lead to one. It seems to me Simi really finds the open seam. Portland now up three. Vandermars misses, but there's Ryan Nicholas. He's a workhorse. He puts it back. You got to put a body on him. He attacks the glass. And then the dagger. Right here, Kevin Bailey off the dribble. Clutch jump shot. Pilots the upset. 70 67. San Francisco Dons traveling down south to take on the LMU Lions. LMU with only one conference win this season. The Dons are ready. Late in the game, LMU down two. Anthony Ireland keeping his dribble alive. Tough layup. He gets it to go. Plays the game low to high. Reminds me of a poor man's Jameer Nelson. Minute left. Cole Dickerson open for three. He hits it. That ties the game at 59. Final seconds. Cody Doolin. Watch this. The nice hesitation. You're going to see two LMU defenders are going to run into each other. Turns the corner. He gets the layup. LMU has one last chance. The heave. No good. USF holds on 61-59. Let's get you to the updated standings in WCC. Number three, Gonzaga. They are rolling there 26-2 overall. 13-0 St. Mary's at 12-2. BYU 9-5. Santa Clara 7-6. San Diego drops to under 500 at 6 and seven. Coach, the Zags are doing everything right as they push for a top seed. Will they get it? Will they be out west? And what makes this team different than the other Zags teams? 
Well, I think undefeated in the WCC puts him right in that topic of conversation. Also being ranked number three in the nation. As I look at my four number one seeds right now, I'm looking at Indiana in the Midwest, Miami maybe in the East, Michigan State in the South, and then I would like to see the Zags in Salt Lake City as a number one seed. This is a very deep, well-balanced team. I love Pangos and Bell in the backcourt. Olenek and Harris are an NBA size front line. What makes this team a little different, Chris, is that they understand time and score ebb and flow. They not only know how to close out halves, they know how to close out games. This is a team with an extremely high basketball IQ that knows how to win. You and I both feel the same way. St. Mary's can be a dangerous team if they can get into the NCAA tournament. Tournament implications today. Big game against Creighton. Well, the stage has been set now that they get to see Creighton today. This would be a big test against a quality team. Matthew Della Vadova will have to have his pick and roll game on point. He's going to have to be able to split it. He's also going to have to come off and find space. He loves to get into the paint, but he's got to have a high assist, low turnover game. He's averaging 6.3 assists a game in the WCC. The neutral site losses to Pacific Georgia Tech hasn't helped this team. This is a big, big game. How big was it for them to beat BYU again? Well, that's that's huge. Uh, again, another good win against the top three team in the conference. Let's talk about our game coming up, Santa Clara at Portland. Big game for Santa Clara. I hate to pull out the must win, but they're coming off a loss. Gonzaga beat them by 43. This is a team that's returned five starters. They had a good start, but they've yet to beat a top three team in the WCC. They beat San Diego twice. They beat San Francisco twice. Pepperdine twice. Portland once. Santa Clara's got to come out and dominate from the get-go and somehow, some way, win this game. We're just getting started. We're coming right back. Next, we're going to introduce you to the leader of the Broncos, senior forward Mark Fazzolini, back from injury and leading Santa Clara on the court and in the classroom. Let's take you back to Tuesday night. BYU and Utah State tied at 68. Time running out. Carlino's three-pointer goes off the front of the rim. Senior Craig Cusick with the rebound and put back at the buzzer gives the Cougars the win, 70-68. to What made it even more special was that earlier that day, Cusick learned that his father had been diagnosed with cancer. That shot and a BYU win, a much-needed boost to his family on what had been a difficult day. Great ending, great story for the BYU Cougars. And for the second time this season, Gonzaga center Kelly Olynyk is the West Coast Conference Player of the Week. Olynyk shot 19 for 30 from the field, a blistering 63% while averaging over 21 points and 8 rebounds as the Zags swept through the Bay Area with wins over St. Mary's and USF to remain undefeated in conference play. Senior leadership can be a key component to a team's success. Having a commodity like experienced players on a roster can solve a lot of issues on the court. Santa Clara head coach Kerry Keating has one of the best in redshirt senior forward Mark Trasolini, a player that has battled back from a potential career-ending injury for success on and off the court. Really exciting day going back home, see the family and friends, play a few games. Can't wait to get on this flight and get back to the greatest city in the world. I first found out about it my junior year, two years ago, um, that I'd be going back to Vancouver. We'd be playing four or five home games. While we're in Vancouver, we're playing four uh, different teams, or three different teams, four games. Um, and I'm pretty close with a lot of the guys. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing some old friends. I was so excited, obviously, going home to play in front of my parents. All my friends, I mean, I had like hundreds of people that wanted to come watch me. So where I went to school, I was one of these kids uh, about six or seven years ago. Hey, hey yeah. this guy? I brought the team back. He was ready to go because, I mean, that's his hometown. He was ready to play in front of his, uh, his family and friends. We're at the Capilano Suspense Bridge. About to go over a big bridge. Oh, oh, the oh, scared. Oh, 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 I think it's moving. <laughs> It was cool. <laughs> and then first game, first game in, two minutes in, um, just went down with the injury. I see a lot of traumatic injuries happening these, these days, and 
obviously one that Mark went through preparing himself uh, through a long stretch to be a senior last year. Uh, go back home and play in front of his, uh, his home fan, uh, crowd and his, his uh, family and friends back in Vancouver. So I got an MRI the next day and uh, found out that I tore my ACL and my meniscus and just heartbroken. When you have a serious injury like that, you think, will I ever be the same player? Will I be able to come back? Am I going to be still playing basketball? Am I going to be able to play pro someday? Is this going to affect me in the future? You know, a lot of, a lot of questions go through your head, a lot of doubts. At the beginning, you're always going to be a little down. Like I told him, like I was the same way when I broke my foot. So I just told him that it's going to be all right. Like you're going to come back, you're going to be fine, you're going to, you're going to come back stronger. And in no time, he started getting back on the court and getting his confidence back in his legs. And uh, it, it was it went really well for him. We talked about a lot. I think I definitely grew closer with Kevin through that time. He definitely had a lot of good things to say and was just really encouraging and supportive of, of me. To be out there on the floor and not not help my team and, and seeing the way we were losing games and, and knowing that I should have been out there helping them was, was very difficult. But I tried to make the most out of it and make it into an opportunity um, and learn as much and get, and get better and grow. Comforting for me as a coach to have a guy like that on your roster uh, and add and have that late of an addition uh, in, in a way that maybe most people don't expect. But it's certainly excited for him. And, Excited that he's able to come back and take advantage of the extra time by getting himself into an NBA program, too. Transalini steps into a 16-footer and rattles it home. Boy, Mark playing with so much confidence after the devastating knee injury last year. Get him out of the lineup for the entire season. Has come back in a big way. A milestone that I look forward to ever since I hurt myself getting back on the floor and, and playing in a Santa Clara University uh, uniform. And so I was a little hesitant at first, but I think as each game went, I really gained confidence and momentum. And uh, by the second or third game, I was good to go. He's buried by Trasolini. We talked about him, Mark Trasolini, the guy that missed all of last year with the torn ACL, starting to make his presence known for the Broncos. School is something that's very important to me. Some of them, my parents have always taught me that it's very important, you know, sometime after basketball is done, you're gonna have to do something else with your life. That's something that I proud myself on. I was able to graduate with a, a very good grade point average. I, I graduated early, so I had the opportunity to go to graduate school, which is something that I think will really help me after my basketball career is done. On the court and off the court, he's, he's pretty much a, a balance. He's, he's well balanced, so it's really good that he's good, really good at basketball and really smart. And I mean, I feel like that's a great example to, to show for like the, the, the freshman coming in and everybody else. Foster, Trezzolini, two-handed dunk for Trezzolini. This is really a word that encompasses the, the sort of whole package, and that's something that's very important to me, being well-rounded, the community, uh, performing in the classroom and on the court, and I think that that's just a great list to be a part of, and, and I'm very blessed to be a part of that list. It's the end of the road. I mean, we, we have five seniors on this team. We, gotta, we know what to expect, so we have to make sure we're leading this team because... With the experience we have, we should we shouldn't be going deep into the conference tournament and we should be doing well in the conference. Down low to Translini who dunks it over Ehlers. I think basketball opens a lot of doors. It gives you lots of opportunities. Just puts you in a place that you can really succeed and where you really can be a leader and do things that make a difference. Let's take a quick look at our WCC game of the week scheduled next week. Portland will be at number three, Gonzaga. That is March 2nd. All right, now, Coach, it's such a great story about a kid that wouldn't let an injury keep him off the basketball court. He battled back to join his team and be effective. I mean, that's really what college basketball is all about. It certainly is. It speaks to his perseverance because while he was getting healthy, he was also being a student of the game. And watching him in high school, everybody knew that he could shoot from the perimeter. An excellent pick-and-pop player. But I just like that he's come back bigger, better, and stronger. He's been finishing at the rim. He grabs rebounds. We know he has range to 17 foot, but I like him in the post, in the paint. This year, he showed me that he has a jump hook. He's rebounding. This team started out very strong, 10 and 3, and now sort of has tailored off. He's going to need a big weekend and a big finish for this team to finish the way Kerry Keating would like. Great stories every single week in the WCC. That's it for me and Coach. We'll get you back to Portland after the break.
Beautiful shot of Mount Hood, and welcome back to Portland, Oregon. The Child Center coming up at the top of the hour. The Santa Clara Broncos taking on the Portland Pilots. So glad you've stuck with us on WCC this week. Our Wolf alongside the coach, Brad Holland. And we're going to talk a little academics. And coach, you coached at University of San Diego for 13 years. Talk about how the WCC stresses academics. Well, they're very good academic schools. That's number one. And I was fortunate to graduate every player in my tenure of 13 years except one player. But it's tough because the academics are so strong. The kids have to do a great job of balancing that and basketball practice and games and travel. Well, the academic standards are very high, and it's led to three players in the conference being named academic All-Americans, including one of the players we'll see today, Mark Tresolini. Talk about the fact that these guys are all stars on the court and managed to be stars in the classroom. Well, I was an academic All-American myself, and I can tell you, you got to really manage your time well. So I commend these players because, again, their schools are so strong academically, it's tough to manage your time and have enough time to study and do the things you got to do that way when basketball really dominates your time during the season. Well, I had a chance to talk with Coach Keating just a few moments ago, and we talked about academics in the WCC. Well, I think it's pretty apparent in the results this year. We have three uh, academic All-Americans. Uh, combines, uh, I think, four BCS conferences don't even have that number. Uh, having three in one conference, I think, speaks greatly to the strength of the importance of academics. Certainly for us, it's been a priority ever since we got here. We've uh, routinely placed guys in all district uh, academic teams. And we have a pretty stringent academic regimen at Santa Clara. Obviously, admission standards are very high, and we live up to that once they're in school. And we hold our guys to a pretty high standard to get themselves onto the court as a result of what they do every day academically. Our thanks to Coach Keating for spending some time with us talking about academics in the WCC. And there are other games today in the WCC we want to make sure that everybody is aware of. Creighton and St. Mary's, certainly the game of the day. It will have huge implications for St. Mary's. Break down, break down that game quickly for us, Coach. Well, it's a great matchup, but you're right, Ari. If St. If Mary's can get that win, they're for sure in the NC2A tournament. So the Gales are going to work hard at that one. And do you feel like with Matthew Delvadova, if they get in, they might be able to advance? I do. I mean, they're a team you really don't want to play in the tournament. I think they can advance, yes. We are excited for our game coming up at the top of the hour. The Santa Clara Broncos trying to hold on to that critical number four spot. Mark Trazzolini, Evan Rockamore, and Kevin Foss are some stars, but Portland has been hot of late. They've won three of their last five. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, we will get you set for the Broncos and the Pilots.